shall we do now? Are you just going to lie there, or are you going to entertain me some more? I am not here for your entertainment. Ah, wrong again. Now that all your toys are busted, you better start thinking what you're going to do for a second act. Hey, it's Danny Roth here at the red carpet for Batman Ninja. We're going to get a chance to talk to everybody that's bringing this version of Batman to life. Catwoman, Batman, the Joker. And we're going to find out what it is to bring Batman to feudal Japan. How'd you feel about doing an anime version of Batman? Uh, honored, obviously. Uh, getting getting to be Batman in any sense is always a huge honor. Uh, but getting to do something in terms of where I sort of got my start in voiceover, which was a lot of anime work, uh, was a blast. Batman as an anime. Was that like a thing you were like, I gotta be in this? <laughs> um, they were kind enough to offer me the gig, and I said yes. Most of the characters I do are kind of um, wide-eyed and clueless and innocent. And it was fun to kind of go to the dark side. To be more like yourself, finally. Exactly. To really draw from my childhood pain. <laughs> um, For once. Yes, you finally made it. Because Buster has no pain. <laughs> I think it's such a great idea, and just it, uh, Catwoman's clothes are just killing me. She, she's the most beautiful Catwoman I've ever seen. Have you had a chance to see the American version, and do you think that it is a good representation of what you originally did with the Japanese language version? Oh, we actually got a chance to see it at WonderCon not too long ago, and I have to say, I, I feel like the um, there's a lot of kind of um, long and perhaps complex dialogue in it. Uh, um, so I thought they did a really good job in terms of the translation and then adaptation. Good fight scenes? Absolutely. They're gorgeous. I mean, this, this to me, this is a film that you could literally watch on mute uh, if you wanted to and still be just as entertained. You might be a little confused in some spots. It's such a visually gorgeous film and it's so well put together, so well animated that it's like it's just such a treat. And especially towards the end, there might be something with Joker and Batman. I'm not trying to spoil much. Wow, what? Yeah, right? What? Who would have thought? But you have to pretend that you got beat up. That seems like it's really hard work. As Where you're like, huh, huh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've never done that before. Um, and there's a lot of screaming in this. The Joker screams a lot. Did you have to go to the doctor afterwards to like check on the, Actually, the I, instrument? I was, yeah, I should have. I was surprised. It was three days of a lot of screaming. But it does get like, it, it just gets a little like physically like, uh, you know, you kind of feel. Don't eat before you do those. You'll... Because <laughs> you're... It's a lot of grunting. I don't want to puke. <laughs> yeah, but I do enjoy kicking Tara's butt as much as possible, so she better watch it. That's very mean. No, she did how, my makeup tonight. Good, uh, <laughs> She's my, my dear friend. You know, they'll say like she does a flip kick and punch to the face and then she gets a kick to the gut. So you have to go, hi -ya, uh, uh. And You have to kind of visualize it in your head. And then with that, they'll do a lot of extra fighting stuff to make sure everything all fits in. And then you'll do ADR and make sure that they have enough stuff. And sometimes if you do the voice first, they don't animate it exactly as they originally had anticipated, so you have to refix it then. So fight scenes can be tricky. How did it feel to finally see it when it was all done? I don't know. So actually, I, I only did the character design, so I didn't necessarily know how the story would end up. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I thought I worked very diligently on the project, very, very sober. <laughs> and then I watched it and I said, like, oh my god, they're crazy. I was really shocked. Having done this and seeing this movie, it really is eye candy. I mean, it is so beautiful. And we come in and we do voices and all this kind of stuff, but the real work and artistry and is the people that worked on this movie. I mean, it's like they're the ones that put the hours in. And has, I mean, it's I have a huge appreciation for it. It was beautiful. It's visually stunning. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be cosplaying outfits from this movie. It's really beautiful. Is there a thing that really stood out to you visually, a particular character, or a particular scene? Well, Holly, of course. She has the best outfits. <laughs> I love the fight scene, actually, with Harley and Catwoman. Pretty cool. Was there any of the designs that really jumped at you for these characters that were so different that you were like, wow, I really love that? The Joker, right off the bat. As soon as I saw the Joker, I mean, like, I, what does he have, 150 teeth on the upper row? This was one of the creepier looking versions of the Joker that I've seen in animated form because it was just so deliciously evil in so many areas. There's a lot of ponytails in this one, um, but I think not because I'm voicing it, but the Joker really sports some sass. 
he has this kind of um, circus aspect of him and mixed with the armor and the ninja and it's uh and the green ponytail like he's well, he's a it's a, he's a little bit of a fashion icon in this